Here's an interesting way to pack a television inside of a styrofoam cooler wrapped in brown paper for shipping. Well this is an interesting packing job, I gotta say that. Uh, it's a cute little set, it's absolutely filthy and crusty to the max. Um, wonder if the, uh, the plastic's all deteriorated. Geez, this is almost like something I would, s plastic here is all scratched up. This is almost like something I would expect to find out, out in the desert. Wow. It's like, look at that. I don't even think your novice plastic polish is going to rock this thing. So anyway, I guess this is a speaker grill up here. Let's have a look at it and see if uh, it's redeemable. This looks pretty horrific. Very, very cigarette flavored. Check out the hair growing there. Isn't that awesome? Check that out. That's your nicotine fuzz. Your tar fuzz. Again, lots of these white uh, pop-o-matic short shorted caps. I've been running into a lot of these lately. Cute little speaker. Well, let's check the CRT. Um, first off. Well, that's interesting. It's got the original original horizontal output tube and it looks like that one back there is original that one's original this one is not original that's a GE these um, 33 GY7 or 38 HE7 or 33 38 HK7 those are um, seem to be good almost for the life of the set these little black and whites in fact Zenith actually glued them in with silicone well, look at this the uh, audio output transformers unplugged got the original picture bulb ooh that's cracked I didn't even see that sometimes stuff is so close to the front of your face you can't see it anyway let's check the CRT well that's a good sign but thing is baked man I just don't see it happening my bring our filament up here to where it's supposed to be let me let it run for a minute I, I don't have high hopes for this it, this is why I say don't ever buy a television unless you are able to check the CRT first because if this is dead, this thing is junk. Well, surprisingly, this thing has actually come up. That's the cutoff, and that's the emission. We'll do the life test on it. It'll probably be pretty bad. Actually, not really. Let's drop it down to five volts here.
I'm surprised. I think we have a winner, actually. I'm really surprised. All right, let's just let it rip. I connected the speaker. I got the power switch turned on. I don't have a polarized plug here, so I just wrapped it around. Maybe that'll short out and explode. Here we go, contact. And I heard a spark when it popped, when it plugged in, but that's it, dead. See, let's just go real balls to the wall here. It's the power switch dip. Oh, that was good. Okay, I don't mind a little bit of that for entertainment. It didn't hurt anything. Um, I guess I just, those brown wires come out here. I guess I could have just measured it here with the meter, but that would have been too intelligent. So what I did was, um, I checked it with a voltmeter, and yes, there is voltage everywhere here. So that tube does not look like it's... got to make sure these tubes are all in series and if one of them is not making contact then I'm reluctant to Let's unplug it then I'll stick my hand down in here and try and finger this one a little bit So it could be just an open tube filament or an open... I checked this resistor, it's good. But yeah, neg negatory on the uh, glowing of the tubes. The power switch is good, everything's good right here. Even after I let a little bit of the smoke out of it, it's still got a lot more to lose. Okay, so the pin on your left, the small pin, goes through this, there's an inductor in the sleeve here, a choke. Then it goes to that brown wire, which is the power switch. Goes over to the power switch, comes back from the power switch. Goes to these two resistors, you can see there's a modern one there and there's a sand resistor back there. Both of those are good. Okay, so looking at this, you can see that we get the big plug tied to the chassis. These resistors are good. I voltage here. I need to find out where the brake is here. Okay, so there's two lines of thought on how to do this. Take all of these tubes out and test them and see which one's got a dead filament. But it might not be the CR, it might not be the filament. For instance, this coil could be open, it could be a cracked solder, it could be a bad socket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here I'm going to put one lead of the meter here. I'm on AC. I'm going to check here. Then I'm going to check here, check here, check here. And basically what I just want to do is I want to find where it goes to zero. So we'll do pin 1 and 12, then pin 5 and 4, then pin 4 and 5. Okay, so the first one is the big one here. So I've already kind of looked at this. We want to do pin 1. See if I can slip here. So we have 121 volts there, then I want to go to pin 12, which is... Tubes go this way, clockwise. 121 volts, okay, so I think we could follow this trace. The trace goes... hold on. Okay, so the trace comes... 
and it loops around and it comes to right here. Okay, too many distractions here. So we came here from pin 1 and 12, we followed it over here and we have 121 volts there on that tube. So one, two, three, four, this would be the continuation to the next tube and we have zero volts there. Zero volts. So this tube, the second tube in the chain is bad. And measuring this with a, is it a Lindell? Oh, these things are junk. These things are junk. Measuring it with an ohmmeter, it is open. Okay, I've inserted a replacement 8FQ7. And the one that was in there was a Lindahl tube. And this is something I've never really mentioned before, but if you're gonna buy replacement tubes, you wanna use one of the three major brands, which would be like RCA, GE, or Sylvania. This Lindahl stuff, I think it's Japanese made, it was discount junk. And the worst, the absolute worst tubes are those uh, Radio Shack realistic lifetime Korean made. Those things are problems right out of the box, brand new. Well, that's that's appealing. Now the 8FQ7 is the horizontal multi- Ooh, look at that! Let's see. Well, that looks nice. It's nice and bright. Hey, that looks promising. Okay, I got the converter box hooked up to it. Whereas in this fifth oil capsule, the reason it has to be so big is that this is the triglyceride form, which means that it's bound. Crap, I don't like to stick my hand back here. I need to get the appropriate cord for this. This is just fatty acids that can go directly into your system and they can be effective for reducing your inflammation. Well, there's something very important also. In today's world with a doctor here, the average person over 55 today is on five different prescription medications. Omega x has no drug-drug interaction, which is so important. The improper use of prescription medication is probably the sixth cause of death today. I like my prescription medication dependency. Leave me alone. And they worry about the medicine they're taking. I like to be property of Big Pharma and give them all my money. Of is it going to interact with my other drugs? And it reduces the inflammatory pain that you may have in your back, your legs, and so on. To give you a good night's sleep. I gotta say, I've done very few testimonials in my life. You can count them in one hand, but this is a. I have been uh, practicing medicine for over 20 years. The reason why it's such a crappy picture is because I, I don't have the appropriate uh, connector, so I just am using a clip lead. I'm going to do now. Well, I will add this, and this is from a converter box and a crappy Apex converter box. The women are the gatekeepers of the family's health. Mm -hmm. Grandmothers are able to now bend over and pick up their grandchild when the grandchild's running toward them instead of saying, no, 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 grandma's back hurts. So you have this aging society, this active society, this active lifestyle, and everyone wants to move and breathe naturally. They want to be able to get up. They want to be able to walk. They want to be able to enjoy themselves. It is a life-changing product. 
No, they don't. They want to be in wheelchairs on oxygen. Have another cigarette. You have hundreds of people, hundreds of family and volunteers and associates at Great Hope for today. So that you're here to help with the phone message. There's the number. There's two different benefits that I've noticed by taking Omega XL. One being the increased benefit of not having uh, to worry about uh, stiffness or joint problems. The other benefit has been the difference I've seen in my skin. I'm amazed at how many people that I talk to suffer from some sort of back, back discomfort in the lower back. And I have recommended Omega XL numerous occasions and will continue to do so. And I'll be on it for life. The Omega XL capsule is so small that it's no financial risk. Omega XL offers a 90-day playback. Okay, well, there is a quick repair, diagnosis and repair, let a little smoke out, had a little fun, of a, doesn't have UHF, so, 60-something Admiral, with, uh, plastic that's just uh, self-destructing. It's bad. Look at that. Jeez, what do you even do with this thing? Paint it? <laughs>